this year's memorial service honoring the men who proudly served on USS Thresher, SSN 593. I'm Gary Hildreth, past base commander for Thresher Base United States Submarine Veterans and honored to be your master of ceremonies today. We who proudly wear the gold and silver dolphins of the submarine service can think of no better way to honor and remember Thresher sailors and the civilian technicians and mechanics who rode her that day than to once again gather at this time in their memory. For those who are able, please rise for the arrival of the official party, parading of the colors, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the playing of our national anthem. Color Guard, parade the colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Deb Henderson and Ms. Lori Arsenal will now sing our national anthem. Guard. Retire the colors. Lieutenant Philip Stevens, Navy Chaplain, will now deliver the invocation. All merciful, omnipotent God, our hearts are solemnly saddened as we remember the tragic loss of the USS Thresher. Fifty years ago today, we were humbly reminded of Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 31 that says the horse is prepared for battle, but safety is of the Lord. Lord, today we gather to memorialize those aboard the USS Thresher and acknowledge that their sacrifice was not in vain. <clears throat> because they sacrificed their tomorrow 
thousands of Samaritans continue to operate and return home safely today. It was this crew's unshakable bravery and selfless sacrifice that set an unprecedented successful course of submarine safety and performance ability. And for that, we are eternally grateful. As we pay tribute to their honorable lives today, guide our thoughts and words to respectfully remember them for the friends, family, and loved ones of those lost. I ask that you will comfort and strengthen their hearts today. For it is in your holy name I pray. Amen. When a new chapter of United States Submarine Veterans was organized in 1989, those charter members, in their infinite wisdom, decided to honor the memory of their shipmates on USS Thresher by naming the base for Thresher. And as many and as members of United States Submarine Veterans, we live by a creed that states, to perpetuate the memory of our shipmates who gave their lives in the pursuit of duties while serving their country, that their dedication, deeds, and supreme sacrifice be a constant source of motivation toward greater accomplishments. We pledge loyalty and patriotism to the United States of America and its Constitution. First and foremost, I would like to welcome our honored guest today, Mr. Alfred Singleman, National Junior Vice Commander, United States Submarine Veterans Incorporated. Thank you, Al, for traveling from your home in upstate New York and joining us here today in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. New Hampshire's first gentleman, Dr. Thomas Hassan, thank you, sir, for sharing your afternoon with us and representing the governor and the great state of New Hampshire. It's very much appreciated. Rear Admiral Select Bryant Fuller, 83rd Shipyard Commander, Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. Thank you, sir, for your leadership and guidance at our shipyard. Your commitment to people, processes, and standards solidifies our purpose with this memorial service. Commander, Submarine Forces, Vice Admiral Michael Connor. Admiral, your distinguished service to your country in the United States Navy speaks clearly of your honor and dedication to the men and women who operate and maintain our submarines today. Thank you for accepting our invitation to be this afternoon's keynote speaker. New Hampshire Representative Carol Shea Porter, thank you, ma'am, for attending this historic memorial service. New Hampshire Senator Kelly Ayotte, thank you also, Senator, for attending today's event. New Hampshire Senator Jean Shaheen, Thank you, Senator, for attending this milestone anniversary. With such busy schedules, we'll, we feel very honored and privileged to have such representation from our elected officials this afternoon. We look forward to your remarks. Ms. Vicki Billings and Mr. Blake Billings, daughter and son of Lieutenant Commander John Hillary Billings. Vicki and Blake will be offering remarks in a musical piece in our ceremony today. Your participation in this memorial service makes this even more special for all of us. Thank you. In the audience, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to recognize various groups that have joined us today. Family members of those who sailed on Thresher, former Thresher crew members, members of numerous submarine veterans and submarine veterans of World War II organizations, officers and crew, of submarines presently undergoing overhaul here at the shipyard, officers, staff, and employees of Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, and three very proud and dedicated youth leadership organizations. The Dover High School NJROTC, Naval Sea Cadet Corps Unit, SSN 778, and our young Marines who've been a very important part of this service each year for many years. Thank you all for attending. <laughs> Unable to join us today, but recognizing the significance of this memorial service, Senator Susan Collins from Maine, the Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Ray Mabus, 
Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Jonathan W. Grenart, and Commander, Naval Sea Systems Command, Vice Admiral Kevin McCoy, all have sent along letters on the occasion of this service. In the spirit of time, I will read two of those letters. From the Secretary of the Navy, on behalf of the Department of the Navy and a grateful nation, I join you on the 50th anniversary of its loss in remembering and honoring USS Thresher, SSN 593, and her crew. Thresher was the lead boat of her class of nuclear-powered attack submarines in the United States Navy. On April 10, 1963, while on a deep test dive about 200 miles off the northeast coast of the United States, USS Thresher was lost and all hands aboard perished with her at sea. The loss of the lead ship of a new, fast, quiet, deep diving class of submarine led the Navy to reevaluate the methods used to build its submarines. The Subsafe Submarine Safety Program was created as the direct result and has no doubt saved countless lives and enabled our modern day submarine fleet to remain the best in the world. I commend each of you gathered here today in the cause of keeping this important event fresh in the minds of our countrymen. No, this boat and her brave crew were not lost in vain and have left their indelible mark on our nation's history. Please accept my best wishes for a memorable anniversary. Sincerely, Ray Mavis, Secretary of the Navy. A longtime friend of Thresher families and participant in a number of these Thresher memorial services is Vice Admiral Kevin McCoy. I'd like to read his letter to the friends and family of USS Thresher. Ten years ago at the 40th anniversary memorial when I was commander of Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, I had the opportunity to meet with many of the USS Thresher family members that were in attendance and listened to their stories. I experienced the profound personal impact that the loss of that great ship had on each of them. Those stories moved me then and still personally impact me. Many times throughout my career and especially during my time as commander of the Naval Sea Systems Command, when I had to deal with hard technical and safety issues impacting not only our submarine force, but also our surface ships and aircraft carriers, I have shared your stories and experiences. These stories remind us of the serious responsibility we have in dealing with the safety of our submarines and their crews. And relating your stories is my way of giving you a voice and honoring all of you for your tremendous personal sacrifice. Today, the Navy will commemorate the 50th anniversary of the loss of USS Thresher, SSN 593, and her crew, including civilians from Sperry, Raytheon, and Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. Few events are so locked in time as what occurred that day when our newest submarine, known by its Latin phrase, V to Cita, meaning silent strength, went eternally quiet. The lessons of that tragedy led to the development of the Subsafe program, designed to maintain the safety of our nuclear submarine fleet by, by providing maximum reasonable assurance that subs hulls will stay watertight and that they can recover from unanticipated flooding. Subsafe has kept our submarine force safe from a similar event for past for a past half a century. Our submarine force is stronger, safer, and more capable today in no small part because of the heroic and patriotic sacrifice of our men in uniform and the civilians accompanying them on that fateful day. Through the Subsafe program, the sacrifice of those shipmates resonates in the rigorous standard of quality assurance that we've put in place for every single submarine in our current and future fleet. To the surviving family, friends, and loved ones, I thank you for your ultimate sacrifice and I offer my sincerest condolences for the grief that will always be with you. 
With each passing year, the loss of Thresher shows how our national strategy is dependent on the continued forward deployed operations of our submarines in every ocean of the globe. God bless you all. God bless the men of Thresher, and may God bless America. Sincerely, K.M. McCoy, we will never forget. Our first guest speaker this afternoon is Rear Admiral Select Bryant Fuller. Rear Admiral Select Fuller reigns from Tennessee and entered the United States Navy in June 1985. He has served aboard the guided missile destroyer USS Charles F. Adams and the Trident submarine USS West Virginia. On October 9, 2009, Rear Admiral Select Fuller assumed command of America's oldest continuously operating Naval Shipyard, Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the podium Rear Admiral Select L. Bryant Fuller, 83rd Commander, Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. Thanks, Gary. Trust your families and former crew members, Senator Shaheen, Senator Ayotte, Representative Shea Porter, Vice Admiral Connor, Dr. Hassan, trust your base members, submarine veterans, fellow commanding officers, shipmates. Good afternoon. So it's a privilege to stand before each of you today to honor those who sailed aboard Thresher back in April of 1963. Thresher was, and still is, our boat. We designed, built, and overhauled the ship, along with the officers and sailors, civilian technicians, shipyard people went along on the sea trials that fateful day. Thresher will always be a part of Portsmouth Tail Shipyard. Not a day passes that we don't remember the lessons we learned and reflect on our responsibility. We forever have an obligation of trust and commitment to the families of the crew members and the people who sailed on board the Thresher, to our nation and to the Navy, the crews that operate our submarines that we maintain today and their families. Their safety and the ability to execute their mission is entrusted to us. We embrace that responsibility. Every day, we are dedicated to excellence in developing our people, sustaining our standards, and improving our processes so that we can work a little smarter and a little harder in order to never again suffer a tragedy like the Thresher. We have the finest craftsmen, engineers, and technicians in the world focused on supporting our Navy and the submarine force with their skills, their knowledge, and their dedication. Each day, we commit ourselves to be, continue to be worthy of the trust given to us to execute our mission of repairing, maintaining, and improving submarines. This is our duty and our responsibility, which we willingly accept. Thank you so much for attending today as we pay tribute to these American heroes. Thank you, sir. Our second speaker this afternoon is National Junior Vice Commander, Mr. Alfred Singelman. Mr. Singelman enlisted in the Navy in 1968 and qualified submarines on board the Fleet Ballistic Missile Submarine, USS Francis Scott Key. During his time on board this submarine, he completed nine deterrent patrols. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium, Mr. Alfred Singelman, Jr. Thresher families, Thresher crew members, fellow submarine veterans, fellow submariners, and honored guests. Today on the 50th ceremony of the loss of the USS Thresher, SSN 970, 
9, uh, 593, we are here to remember the 129 men who went on eternal patrol that April 10th, 1963. At the time, President Kennedy, who would be assassinated in the fall of 1963, described these Cold War casualties as brave pioneers. I quote, the challenge and dedication of these, of, of those, those men of the sea pushing ahead into the depths to advance the knowledge and capabilities is no less than that of the forefathers who led the advance on the frontiers of our civilization, end quote. As submariners and as submarine veterans, we shall never forget our lost shipmates on eternal patrol. At sub-school, new submariners learn about the history of the silent service, the boats lost, and the legacy of those who came before them. This is passed on from one generation of submariner to the next generation of submariner yet to come. As submarine veterans, we have a creed to perpetuate the memory of our shipmates who gave their lives in the pursuit of their duties while serving their country, that their dedication deeds and supreme sacrifice be a constant source of motivation towards greater accomplishments. Pledge loyalty and patriotism to the United States of America and its Constitution. At each base meeting, we toll a bell for each boat lost during that month, plus one bell for those who were lost individually or in groups where the boat was not lost. This month, 166 bases will toll a bell for Thresher and the other boats lost in April. We shall never forget them. On April 11th of this year, and of every year, National Submarine Day, many bases toll the boats, uh, to put on a tolling the boat ceremony uh, that we toll a bell for each of the 65 lost boats from 1900 to the present. And 166 bases will be tolling a bell for Thresher and for the boats lost. Telling of the boat ceremony is done at our convention and also at various events. We shall always remember them. Two weeks ago, as part of our creed and by shipmates helping shipmates, bases of USSVI and members of USVI in an eight-day period raised enough funds to help make this ceremony today possible. Based on this, I can say with great confidence that a new generation of submariners and submarine veterans will be here on April 10th, 2063. We will not forget them. I'd also like to read a short, a shortened version of National Commander Michael Berkhamshaw's letter. Uh, I sincerely regret uh, not, uh, not being here and uh, this, uh, I had uh, extremely pressing family matters uh, to attend to, and uh, wanted to be at the gallery to honor those 129 brave souls that were lost uh, much earlier than they should have been. I wanted to stand up for a special Thresher shipmate, Laird Hauser, who was a shipmate of mine on an oiler. We made third class together. We made second class together. He was polite. He was over, overall a great guy and one of the best guys I've known while I was in the Navy. <laughs> At the end of 1962, Michael was in nuke school out in California. And in April of 1963, he learned that one of his boat, one of the boats went down. And in reading the uh, listing of the, uh, the crew members, he also found out he had lost a second crew member. His name was Roger E. Van Pelt. And I know that his family is here today, and I do share in my loss and their loss, and I am sorry for your loss, our loss. I am trying, uh, I try to uh, not allow myself to magnify the loss of Laird and Roger into the 129 uh, souls that I uh, fear that would be overwhelming and I might not be able to bear this. To all of you here and to those unable to attend, I 
I am deeply, personally, and morally sorry for your loss. I am glad to be able to share my thoughts and feelings with you, and I really love each and every one of you, and my thoughts and prayers are with you every day. T. Michael Borkham Shaw. In closing, as National Vice Commander, on behalf of the National Commander Michael Borkham Shaw and the 13,000 members of Submarine Veterans, it's been an honor and a pleasure to speak here today. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Today, we also have the pleasure of hearing from Dr. Thomas Hassan, New Hampshire's first gentleman. Married to New Hampshire Governor Maggie Hassan, Dr. Hassan is a nationally recognized leader in secondary in education and the principal of Phillips Exeter Academy in Exeter, New Hampshire. He holds a bachelor's degree from Brown University and a master's and doctorate degree from Harvard Graduate School of Education. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the podium Dr. Thomas E. Hassan. Thank you, Gary, for that introduction, and thank all of you in this room who helped to organize today's events. The governor is very sorry that she's unable to make it today, but I'm truly honored to be here in her stead. And today, we remember with profound sorrow the loss of the USS Thresher and 16 officers, 96 enlisted men, and 21 civilians who demonstrated the ultimate sacrifice in support of our nation 50 years ago. The, shrinking, the sinking of the Thresher was an enormous tragedy for the Navy, for our nation, and especially for New Hampshire, as too many families felt the loss of their loved ones. I would now like to recognize the courage and the bravery these men displayed in risking their lives the development of the United States Naval's submarine program by reading this letter on behalf of the governor. Dear friends, I regret that I'm not able to be with you in person today as you remember the heroic sacrifice of the 112 brave crew members and the 17 civilians who lost their lives 50 years ago aboard the USS Thresher. The Thresher was designed, built, and commissioned at our very own Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. And upon her completion, she was the most technologically advanced submarine of her time. However, this did not spare the Thresher from the unthinkable accident that occurred on April 10, 1963. Her loss was a tragedy for our Navy, our nation, and especially for the families of her honorable crew. The loss of the Thresher serves as a reminder of the perpetual risk that members of our nation's armed services confront every day when they put their uniforms on to protect our freedoms and keep our country safe. Those of you gathered here today offer recognition of that sacrifice and serve as a tribute to those 129 gallant souls. The loss of life on the USS Thresher was the worst submarine disaster in American history. But it led to efforts to better protect sailors, including the creation of the SubSafe program, which has a 50-year record of, ev of every SubSafe cer certified vessel returning home. Every year, citizens from New Hampshire and Maine gather on this anniversary to pay our solemn respects. Please know that my thoughts and prayers are with the family members of the crew and civilians who lost their lives aboard the Thresher. And I will do my best to honor them by continuing to make New Hampshire a place worthy of their sacrifice. Signed, Governor Margaret Wood Hassan. Thank you, Dr. Hassan. 
Our next speaker is Representative Carol Shea Porter. A native of New York City, Representative Shea Porter is a graduate of Oyster River High School in Durham, New Hampshire, and earned both a bachelor's and master's degree from the University of New Hampshire. Elected to Congress first in 2006, Representative Shea Porter proudly serves New Hampshire's first district in the U.S. House of Representatives. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the podium Congressman Carol Shea Porter. Good afternoon, and I'd like to pay special respects to all here who had family members or friends who perished. At every time in history, America calls on its men and its women, ordinary citizens, to step up and to serve this country, and they do. And on that day, 129 Americans perished serving this country. The world was a dangerous time. There were problems with the Soviet Union, there were worries, and we knew that we needed to advance the technology. These were the men that were in the forefront, and we remember them. For the families, I can't imagine what that was like. I heard that one woman heard it on the radio while shopping with her daughters, and it was particularly painful to know that it just came as news on a radio. I can't imagine for the children what it felt like to find out that your father was not coming home ever again, that what seemed ordinary in a child's life was actually extraordinary courage and bravery, and they paid the ultimate price. But since then, changes were made. Time is relentless. It marches on. And there will come a time when there will be people who do not remember the voices or maybe don't know all of the stories and can't recognize all of the faces of those who died that day. But what we will remember is their bravery, their patriotism, their courage, and what they gave to this country because of that horrible, horrible event and that tremendous sacrifice. It was safer for my cousin's husband when he was a submariner, or a submariner, as I think you like to say. And because of that great sacrifice, there will be men and women whose lives will be spared, who will take all of those safety checks and so many more as routine. So we honor the men who were there that day, and we honor the men and the women of the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, the greatest shipyard in the world, for the work that they do each day to keep this country safe. And again, our sympathy is with all of the relatives that lost so many precious years. In